something that I would like to introduce to the people there in Britain, all of my boxing fans. I know many of you have read about and have heard, and if you saw the Williams fight, you saw me uh, reveal the Ali Shuffle. That's my new dance to the world. <laughs> this Ali Shuffle is something that's sweeping the nation throughout America. Old people, young people, ladies, men, all throughout the colleges, everywhere that I have toured since the Williams fight, they're trying to do the Ali Shuffle. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the regular dance that I use just before the shuffle. I'm moving and I'm moving and I'm jumping around and just before you know it, that's how we shuffle from the side view. See, that's the side view. And then this is how we shuffle from the front view. And just as soon as you do that shuffle, a split second right after that shuffle is a good punch. And it's the Ali shuffle. Well, now let's meet the man who's seen the shuffle pretty close up twice. He's also been <laughs> at the end of those fists twice. The reigning British and Empire heavyweight champion, Henry Cooper. <laughs> well, what do you make of the Ali shuffle, Henry? It's a good gimmick, and every, everyone's got to have a gimmick. That's, uh, that's Mohammed Ali's, <laughs> apart from his new name. Well, now, next month, Henry, you... Um... <clears throat> well, tonight we have Muhammad Ali with us because he's with us live via satellite from... New York, can you hear me, Muhammad Ali? Yes, I do. How are you? I'm well, thank you, Ali. I've got to tell you, uh, Ali, that uh, you are not getting our award because it goes to a British uh, sports personality. But I'll tell you what we will do. I'll tell you what Who's we will... Who's it going to? I'll tell Who's you what it we... going to? That fellow named Best? <laughs> <laughs> He's not as pretty as me. Somebody said he was pretty. Just before we close this interview, Give us some idea of what you think uh, is happening with Joe Fraser. When do you think you might fight him again? Well, number one, he's too ugly to be the world heavyweight champion. <laughs> Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier is so ugly, his face should be donated to the Bureau of Wildlife. <laughs> that man, that man, let me tell you, he can't write no poems, he can't predict no rounds, and let me tell you, I'm not conceited, I'm just convinced. <laughs> Harry, listen, I'm so modest, I can, admit my, I can admit my own fault. And my only fault is, I don't realize how great I really am. <laughs> now, tell us very quickly, Ali, um, if you should beat Fraser, if I may say that, uh, you, will then fight, uh, you will then fight George Foreman. You will then Did fight you George Foreman. Me? Just very quickly, give us your opinion of George Foreman, Ali. George Foreman, he's good and he's strong. He hits real hard, but before he hits you, he draws his punches back and he warns you. He says, like, I'm getting ready to hit you with the right hand. He'll go, mm. watch, I'm getting ready to hit you with the left. Hold and it. By the time, let me tell you, he, he will not, listen, somebody told me George Foreman was awful strong. I said he should try band roll on. That's a deodorant. <laughs> Ali, thank you very much indeed for joining us again in this program. Thank and everybody. Congratulations thank everybody on the award. Out there. I thank all of you for taking time to listen to me. I love my fans in England, and I consider you number one, and I'm going to get the title back to prove all of you right for giving me this award. Thank you. <laughs> football stadium in Kinshasa at 4 a.m. Scene of perhaps the most amazing fight of all time. Ali, 32, thought to be past it. George Foreman, 25, champion of the world, thought to be unbeatable. Suddenly, Ali looks very tired indeed. In fact, he was merely planning the execution. champion of the world at 32 in the eighth round by a knockout. A triumph seldom equaled in the history of boxing. For 14 years, Muhammad Ali had been telling us, I am the greatest. At last, we were beginning to believe it. I shall return. <laughs> I shall return.
I shall return. Those famous words from General Magoff, I remember. And I didn't actually know, but I believed it. And I'm thankful and happy to say here that I did return. And the reason I won the fight the second time, the reason I fought such a better fight, Spinks' head has gotten so big, everybody told him he was the greatest. He beat me. He thought I was finished. They thought my legs were gone. Everybody thought I was finished. So Spinks trained, but not like he should have. I wasn't really finished. I trained and got in top of that shape. I got in the best shape of my life. Let me counsel this win. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can stop it. Hold it. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Can't do that. Anyway, the second time, he was too confident. He had taken a title lightly. He probably didn't train as he should. He thought it was finished when it wasn't finished. I got in good shape, and that was my last effort. I don't plan never to go in the ring again. So when all of my fans out there in Britain know, if you want me to stay like I am, don't wish for me to fight again. I will not fight again. I'm going to go down the first man to win the title three times. It'll be hard for me to top that last fight, to have a bigger crowd, to have a better performance. I'm going to get out now and be the first black champion mainly, the first champion period to do it three times. So I'm now still you in London. I'm never fighting again, but I'm deceiving the American press. I'm tricking them. I'm telling them that I might fight again. I can't take my title. If I say I'm through completely, they take my title and they give it to some other bum. But I'm going to use the title and get all I can out of it. So what I'm doing is telling them in this country, I might fight again. That way they can't take it. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to fight no more. But I might fight again. That way I can keep my title. So I tell all my British fans out there, we will retire the greatest of all times. <laughs> I'm going to present you with the award you've won, the BBC Overseas Personality of the Year, and appropriately... Third time. This is the third time you've won it. Oh, I'm so No wrong. man or woman has ever won this I three see times. my name is not on it. The last time you had my name... We didn't have time to put it on, but we were. No, that wasn't it. You just didn't expect me to win it. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun, boxer. All of you who don't like me because my big mouth that was only publicity. I didn't, I wasn't really confident, or, or that confident, or cocky, or proud, but I was just trying to make money. And by talking a lot and raising my voice, this sold out arenas and made me so popular, but I don't want to say uh, how great I really am. I think everybody in Britain would like me to say on their behalf that you over the years have given them thrills and entertainment and Thank fun you. and pleasure and we're I very like, grateful for thank it. You. Do you pay me for this show? <laughs> uh, honey, honey. I have a point for this show. He came all the way here, pulled me out, did this interview, but BBC is not paying me. So I have an instant point for BBC. I love your show, I admire your style, but his pay is so cheap, I won't see you for a while. Goodbye. <laughs>